Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Captain Sukranus back yet again in World of Warships. Alright, so last time we looked at the Kawachi battleship of the Imperial Japanese Navy, and today we're going to continue in that sort of vein, instead looking at the Miyogi. Now, as I mentioned last time, this is one of those paper ships. That is, it was designed on paper, but now actually went to construction. Its plans actually eventually resulting in the successor to this ship which is in the tier 4 as the tier 5 Japanese battleship the Congo which is as I showed you last time a very similar looking vessel just with a bit of a different arrangement on the decks some different guns okay so in comparison to our Kawachi there are a few things we need to note so I'll just mouse over here so the actual survivability of the Miyogi is high it's got better armor and more health however as it stands the stock Miyogi has less artillery power, not by much, but by a little bit, than uh, the outgoing Kawachi, if you fully upgraded the Kawachi. It's, however, a lot faster. It's much, much more maneuverable, but it's also much easier to see, as you'll notice with concealment points, the Miyogi scores are 20, measly 27, whereas the Kawachi was scoring 67, so they will see you coming. However, the biggest problem for the Miyogi initially is that it does not have anti-air equipment at all. Literally, no, no anti-air defences as the stock ship, which I have found is a hell of a problem because usually with the Miyogi you're getting thrown into battles with aircraft carriers, so you've got to hope someone's going to hang around near you to protect you. It does get anti-air. But only quite a way down the track. But then it really picks up its anti air, it gets 20, 20 points worth, which puts it significantly against the Kawachi, which had enough anti air to fry maybe a starling. But as you can see, that's quite a way down the track. I'll have to get my second hull and then, another, then get the third hull. And as I don't play premium, I'm playing non premium solely. Uh, that's going to take quite a bit of time. As you can see, I've got almost no experience in this ship. I did upgrade its propulsion though, so it is a brisk ship now. I can get up to 29 knots, which is very fast. It's as fast as some destroyers. Fast than some, in fact, I believe. Um, so it's a very fast, fast battleship. Which makes it quite scary, because while it's only got these three turrets against the six, because they're all centrally aligned, they can all fire in either, in either direction, whereas really eff effectively, the Kawachi only had four that could do that, and these are better guns with a longer range. So, let's, let's just have a look. So, that's the damage on these. I'm firing 1.8 rounds a minute and doing a decent amount of damage. I've also got a range of 14 kilometers, essentially. Kawachi, by comparison, does notably less damage, firing the same amount of rounds a minute, it is a bit faster to turn the guns, but with its upgrade, it had an effective range of 9.8 kilometers. So the Miyogi can outshoot and outrun its predecessor, which makes it a viable replacement. However, let's see how it goes in battle in the inept hands of Captain Zagranus. Okay, let's see what we're going up against. We actually have our successor, the Congo, on this battlefield. I'll see if I can get a nice view of it. Uh, as we start the battle. And we've also got tier 4 aircraft carriers. As I said, I don't have anti-air defences. I'm wondering whether my companion in the other Miyogi does. Nope, he is in fact even less advanced than I am. He hasn't got his engine upgrade. And that's how big an engine upgrade it was. There's quite a, quite a difference. It really picks it up. Um, okay, so this is the Miyogi. Isn't it lovely? Now, yeah. there's the Hosho which is the first Japanese aircraft carrier. Now, there's the Congo. That's what this ship actually became. So as you can see, very, very similar looking vessel. Uh, but a few more guns than me. It's got an extra forward turret, which would be extremely useful, I have to say. Okay, she's still a bit of a tub, to be honest. She's not quite as slick as you think, but while being a bit tubbish, she is fast. We've just got to stay out of the way of any torpedo bombers, because they will 
make a mince meat of me unless I've got someone nearby to help me out. And you can't outrun planes in a battleship. You just can't. You can be clever and fly towards places they don't want to go, like, you know, ships with anti-air. But ultimately, I'm just going to have to be a bit cautious and keep an eye on those torpedo bombers there and there. Hopefully they'll pick someone else. Perhaps perhaps they can go and fight the destroyer. Okay. That was that was just rude. I'm gonna have to repair that. Yeah, you're in my line of sight, Chan. Oh, I can hit you. And that's the combo on the other side. Problem solved, sir! I'm just going to switch over to some AP rounds, because at this range... Oh good, got him properly too. She banks a heck of a lot in those turns and drops a lot of speed, as all battleships do. Battleships aren't designed to turn quickly, they just, they just don't do it. Now these guns are going to take a while to turn, so I've got to rely on the inaccuracy of my enemy I'm afraid. And they're not cooperating so much on it. Just make sure my heading's not going to put me in an island. Okie dokie. She's going to repair a little bit. Not particularly worried about that cruiser there. Him, however, I'm going to take a shot at. Well, he definitely felt that one. No doubt about that. Whether I'll get to kill him or not is another question. One good shot with any sort of armor piercing is going to leave him against me. The rudeness of my opponents knows no bounds. I am now an island. He'll actually come in range of my short range, uh, and he's dead. I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, that's just not friendly. There is pretty much nothing I can do about that, other than get to show you the animation of torpedoes striking a ship. That's kind of what the hell look. Oh dear God, this has not gone well. This has in fact been an absolute disaster. Well, guys, that's what happens when you get your engine shot out and then manage to run across two ships or a ship with torpedoes and those delightful torpedo bombers. Once again, it seems we get to observe the beauty of a sinking ship. I think to fill out this uh, this little video, I'm actually going to take a little bit of a cruise in the St. Louis, see if we can demonstrate the St. Louis a little bit better. Okie dokie. It seems that Sigranus is back on form in that regard. Let's sink as many ships as we can, even if they're our own. Okay, so, St. Louis. I didn't actually run you through when I first showed this ship to you. So this is a fairly early American ship, and it's actually the last of its sort of form. Um, from the Phoenix onwards, American cruisers take on the general nature of the Phoenix cruiser. This is the last, essentially, gun barge, as I like to think of it. It's a bit of a tub, not particularly fast, but by golly is it carrying guns. It's carrying 14 main turrets and 18 secondary turrets and 8 AA mounts, which makes it respectable. It's giving us a range of 10.4 Ks, as I said, it's actually outranging the Kawachi we showed last video, and it's firing 7.5 rounds a minute. So if I can get good, if you can get good hits, you're actually gonna be out striking a battleship, or at least a similarly ranked battleship. And it's in fact got one point less on the artillery ranking than the Kawachi in so many ways. I prefer this to the Kawachi purely because it seemed to be a Kawachi in a smaller, fitter body. Okay, so let's take this and Lewis out, just so that we can fill out a bit of time, to be honest, and to see if I can salvage something of this video in regards to sailing skill. Uh, the big thing to remember is what I did was really damn, damn stupid with, with the Miyagi there. I got in just a little bit too close. You might have noticed that the other battleships were actually halting back a bit. And that's really what you need to do, because if you get in front of your cruisers, as I did, you're going to be the main target. Whereas if the cruisers are in front of you, 
People will often try to evade the fire from your battleship while trying to wipe out the cruisers. However, if you get that far forward, what happened was bound to happen. Because a battleship in that position is the prime target for a hell of a torpedo strike, which is exactly what happened to me. And I honestly did deserve it. Sometimes getting into the mindset of what sort of ship you're in is a really good idea because I was playing more as a cruiser player than as a battleship player and that is what cost me my ship. Okay, so we're out in the St. Louis. Now this is the later version, you know, once I've enhanced it all, so it's not as shiny as another one. As we get into battle, I will be able to show you what what the original St. Louis looked like, the unupgraded one with all of the beautiful gilding <laughs> all over it, including a golden winged US flag on the prow. I feel that this um, this appearance is a little bit more Spartan. That's a little bit more practical. I'm sure glinting gold is quite a nice easy target for for seafaring vessels with big guns. Let's just admire the skybox for a little while, isn't it beautiful? While the texture quality on things like the islands isn't fantastic, the overall effect of this game is really impressive. The lighting in particular, I mean, the way that light hits the water is, is really quite, quite attractive and, you know, as much as this game is about blowing up other ships so there's lots of smoke and fire and, and things like that, it is kind of nice to just, you know, feel like you're in a, a, a nice world. And I mean, unless you get close to the answer and inspect them, they're perfectly fine. I have actually got AA off, which is why you're seeing a bit of sort of a, a jaggedness around the island's shapes. If I chucked AA on, we might sacrifice a bit of the FPS, which I'm happy with at the moment. It's hovering around 60. Um, but yeah, I could turn the AA on and it would probably be even prettier. But I don't really want to sacrifice the frame rate. Okie dokie. Now my other piece of advice to people newly starting World of Warships is to learn the range of your guns quickly. It's not so crucial that you might, if you miss your first salvo in say a cruiser or some, oh, destroyers take a bit of time to reload quite often. Especially in cruisers it's not so bad. But by golly, if you're in a warship, learn your ranges. Sorry, not warship, battleship. Because if you miss that first salvo, it's going to cost you because you could easily not get another round off before they're burying it all they've got into. And that guy is just outside my range. I might drop some of it. Let's see if he turns a bit. I'm actually going to do this because that destroyer previously is going to come out somewhere over there. Got him. And that is the St. Louis, you notice all the gold, so you get to look at the prow. We may not get close enough to actually inspect the prow on an enemy ship. Uh, I don't think I'm that brave. Now at present there aren't a huge number of maps in World of Warships, but there's enough variety to keep you entertained, and they're big enough that you can take different paths through, say, the islands, and um, yeah, have a lot of fun with that. But yeah, there's enough diversity and there are some maps that only come up very occasionally, which sort of spices things up. Now there is one map that hopefully at some point I'm actually going to get to show you, which is an entirely oceanic map. There is no, in this map, there is no landmass. And it's actually terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying because there's nothing to hide behind, nothing to dodge around, nothing to be tactical about. You're just pitching one fleet against another in an open, open playing field. And that's scary and fun at the same time. Now what is that over there? Okay, it's a Wix. So that's a, an American cruiser over there, tier 3. So as long as I keep out more at the limit of my guns, I should be out of range of his torpedoes. The Americans tend to have shorter range, slower torpedoes than the Japanese. Um, the Japanese seem to sort of master torpedoes a little bit better. Okay, there you go, mate. There we go. Oh, 
that was a bit of a shame. And reload. Now, you, I'm going to fire all of them at once. So you can choose to fire one gun at a time, or all at once. Really depends on how much you trust your aim, because with firing one at a time, you can sort of adjust your aim. Now, I'm going to be range of torpedoes. I bet you he's fired some already. But in this ship, I should actually be able to avoid it. Ah, spoke too soon. Okay, let's repair that. Thankfully, as you can see, this ship has quite a bit of um, health, so thankfully I can survive things like that. A smaller ship would not have taken it so well. Best bit of firing I've ever done. So what's that over there? That's a Tenryu. Actually, that was a very... I love the Tenryu. It gave me a good video. I was able to salvage some of my, my beaten pride by using one of those. about the turn. Smack him again. Now some of those actually turns quite well and it's not it's not horribly slow, but it's definitely not not a racehorse or anything. Uh, the only thing you're gonna definitely outmaneuver is a battleship. Yeah. Thankfully the AI is as stupid as I am and was just trying to fire into an island. Uh, the other thing is to learn your elevations because some ships really can fire over just about any island. Um, others, such as the Kawachi in particular, do not have that elevation so they just can't. Also, I don't really recommend doing what I just did. No one likes having someone fire guns at short range over their decks. It makes people a little bit edgy for some reason. I'm not sure why. Rude. Very rude. I'm gonna sink you for that. Well, I'm I'm actually really pleased. We've sunk a respectable number of vessels in the last few videos. I feel like I might actually even be a valid well the warships player with that with that. Uh, let's just hope I can keep it up. Problem solved, sir. Okay. Now we're sort of going hunting this oh dear. All of their battleships. We're over there, and we don't have a choice. Do we have anything with? We do have ten Ryu, which means we do have some torpedoes. I like that. Let's swap out to some AP because if I can get at long range and start dropping shells on them, that'll be good. If there are any left by the time we get over, you'd be amazed how many times a few small cruisers can wipe out battleships. A well-played cruiser is a very, very powerful thing. Very, very powerful. Never underestimate cruisers. I get, I actually get concerned if I'm going up against someone in St. Louis while I'm in, say, a Kawachi Okiyogi, because I know while I can do more damage, he can lay nearly eight salvos of eight guns into me in the same time it takes me to get two salvos of six barrels off. Okie dokie. How's that? It's actually quite fun to watch that just sail off into the air. Will it land on him though? Oh, almost. Oh, he saw me. That. Ha! Oh, that was. That was fun. That's the fun of, of using this, the um, the monoculus while firing. As you never know until you actually get the flashing warnings that you've been hit. So you can watch rounds come in and just sort of hold your breath. Okie dokie. Oh, stop it. That did no damage to him whatsoever. Let's swap out just some HEs. As you can see, I'm barely penetrating his armor even on the deck. 
Battleships, if you've got small guns, are very, very good opportunities to just unload a whole lot of HE. As you can see, I'm actually doing the same damage with high explosive rounds as I was with I'm um, piercing. See, that's gonna hurt. Ah, he missed me again. But he's upset. I would not like to be that battleship captain. In fact, I've been that battleship cannon. I may have just run into someone. Nope. Never a nice, nice thought to have. I may not actually survive this battle though. I've taken a lot of damage. But I'm not chickening out now. Only as many shots off. As you can see, I've already landed 65 plus 7 shots. Make plus 13. And I got him. I don't even care. I am so happy with that. I seem to be returning to form, and that makes me unbelievably happy. Alright, so we're going to wrap that up there. We have gone a bit longer than I expected because we did two ships because of my abysmal battleship sailing, as per usual. Okay, so, next time, hopefully, I'll have brushed up the Phoenix enough that I feel confident in actually showing it to you. Um, I may have even been able to afford a few upgrades, which will be a very good thing indeed. Alright, I've been Captain Sigranus. Thank you for watching my somewhat successful sailing. And I'll see you next time on Sigranus Gaming Plays, Wargaming's World of Warships. Thanks.